welcome to another prop video. Today we be building a hem's wheel for me ship so it knows which direction to go. Anyways, welcome everybody. Obviously, hem's wheel, we're building it. While I was building my wagon wheel, which happens to be right there, I decided that the concept of how I was building it would work really well for making a helm's wheel and I've always wanted to have a properly built ornate helm's wheel and this is going to be it. The good news is this one can be done with a jigsaw because you don't have to do as many cuts as that big wagon wheel was. So this one's more accessible to more people. And as you can see here, this is where I was uh, roughing it out in my graphics program to figure out how everything goes. You know, when you see me actually get in here and say, I'm starting to build this, there's so much thought that goes into all everything, how it works out, how it links up, where my seams end up like this here actually gets rotated 22 and a half degrees to bring it across there to get these all supported. These only require one cut off of 90 degrees to make sure that they go in, they wedge it, and it creates strength on that center hub without actually having a ton of strength. Like anyways, or the small stuff, but I really enjoy doing this stuff because it's, it's a mind game to get these things just right and make it accessible to everybody who happens to be watching. Well, as accessible as possible. So we're gonna get right into it. On the my website down below, samhain.ca, you will find this template. It's for free, so enjoy it. Uh, and what this is, this is going to be a 24 inch wheel with uh, the handles, I think, stick out the 34 inches. So a significant size wheel. It's gonna feel good. This video, we're going to be doing the wheel. Next video, we're gonna be doing the actual uh, helm enclosure that it like sits into because most people might need one or the other or need both. Anyways. First thing you're going to do is take the template, using these bullet points, cut one piece of paper and then tape it to get these exactly where you need it. I'm using 1 8 inch stone board which I had left over to make my template and I spray glued this on and now I'm going to go cut this out. So um, yeah, going to get right into it. All right, will help if I get the template here. Sorry for the shadows. It's nice and sunny outside and my garage is not exactly well lit just yet. Anyways, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your template that we made previously and I polished all down onto the saw. When you do this template, make sure you get these edges very, very close to the actual template. If you don't, it makes life very difficult later on. This angle is really important. Now what you do is you go through on a standard two by six uh, construction lumber, you're going to do four of these. And what you see how I do it here, I go back and forth. When I'm marking it out, I just put a little notch here to correspond with these lines. And then after I use a ruler to draw the line right through, you'll see right here why I do that. Now what it allows me to do is it allows me to take my cutoff saw and then run that line exactly, and then do a whole bunch of grooves. And what this does, is it gets 90% of the material out. We're gonna clean it up with a chisel after, but that'll get most of the material out. Now, the only thing that I suggest, I did this one blind from this side and it was very ugly. I suggest you cut all of your visible edges that you can do where you know it's to the right so you can see your blade. Go down, do all of the visible edges that you can hit and then after take this board spin it 180 degrees and then do the other side that way you're not kind of running blind now what you're going to do is you're going to go through and you're going to use a saw to cut down all of these and then after that we're going to start cleaning them up and looking at getting these follows all cut out
Alright, you can now see we got all four fellows completely done and they turned out really nice. I stack them up against each other just to see how all my edges are and if they're roughly the same size, so I didn't screw up too, too much. You'll see that those are templates for later on. Now here, this is my test for my joining. I wanted to see how things were going to work and if you look very carefully right there, you can see just the edge of a hole, which is where I biscuit jointed it onto my foot. It's where I biscuit jointed. Now what a biscuit joiner is, is this little lovely machine. And what it does is it sets a depth and then what you do is that saw blade comes out and digs a hole in the side of your wood. And you insert one of these little doohickeys in after you glue it. Now what it does is it bonds it and allows it to be glued. Now, if you do not have a biscuit joiner, your next best option is no matter what, glue this joint. Just try not to get it on the wood if you want to stain it later. And then you can take a screw and drive it at an angle through here. This gets covered in the center by another piece of wood. But be careful you don't use too long of a screw because, oh my gosh. After, we're going to be putting on another piece of trim here. And we have to drill right through for those. So just keep that in mind. Regardless, this creates an absolutely incredible joint and makes this thing really strong. Is it overkill? Yes, it's overkill. Do you have to do it? Not necessarily, but I was going to show it to you anyways so you see what I'm doing. Regardless, glue and screw if you don't have access to a biscuit joiner or if you want to dowel it, you've got lots of options. This is just the direction that I'm going. Okay, I'm going to get these all biscuit jointed and done up and I'll see you in a bit. All, everything has been biscuit joined. You see when I marked them, I marked them A to A. So when I drew the, my lines, I was ensured that those pieces were going to go back together again. And then you see my redneck clamp here that pretty much, once I had it all glued together, I just put this on and tighten it up. And what it does is it puts pressure on it and keeps it as a circle. So it's really important in that sense to make sure that when this thing dries, that it's going to be as round as possible because you know it's part of the realism of the stern wheel anyways i'm gonna let this dry and we are going to start working on these next which are the actual staves or the the wheels and look at them a little bit wide there but that's okay we're going to be dealing with that as we go we're dealing with tight tolerances so i don't want this to be too tight if you end up putting these in and they're too tight, you're just going to sand down this edge very slightly so it drops on in. That way you end up with a beautiful, smooth fit and it looks really nice. Now, our next step is you're going to need eight pieces of inch and a half by inch and a half. I just take two by fours and rip them down on my uh, table saw just to make sure that they're exactly dimensional when you do it. If you do it this way, make sure to knock that rounded edge off first because where it goes into the actual wheel, you want it to be flat. And those rounded edges kind of can complicate things. So just knock off the round edge. You should have enough uh, width on a 2x4 to cut two of these out with removing that round edge. Regardless, on the template, you will find this, or on the file, you'll find this template. I put this onto final wood because, like onto a final template, that's permanent because who knows, I'm, I'm gonna be building up a whole collection of stuff so I can build a lot of these props over and over again a lot easier than the first one. Now here, this is going to be a notch out like we did before. Now you have two options on this notch out. You can cut your two by four and you can notch this out to begin with so you have more depth to work with. And then what you do is you cut it down to size and then that notch will already be there after you run through the table saw. It's really up to you. I did it after. Anyway, so trace around this, bring it over, notch it out. There we go. Now I'm gonna show you how I do these on the bandsaw and then we'll be back to talk about how to do the other part. Now, 
we need to get the same profile onto here. You have two options. You can grab one of your previous cutout areas. And then what you do is you use masking tape and you tape this whole thing on. And then using your template, you line it back up to where you are. Now you can see you've got that flat back in there again. Well, that's all fine and dandy if you want to spend the extra time, which I did on the boat the first two. And then after that, I was like, no, nope, not doing that. All I did is I took this, using these marks as your index, you come on up, and then from the top view, you have to be right over top, so this might be a bit hard for me to do on the camera. What you want to do is you want to look down and run that along. And what it does is then you can see that, because if you just go straight, you will find that you want your line. But if you do it this way, let's see if I can pick it up here. If you look straight on, you can see now that those two lines are just about perfect. You can see just there. That one could be out a tiny bit, but you know, in the end, it's not the end of the world. And then the second one we do is at the top here. Same thing. This one's a bit easier because it's got less, less catch on it. Like I said, this is hard to do in the camera. Normally I do this directly from the top so I have the best view of what I'm doing. But there we go. And just like that, I'm going to cut these out now. And then I'm going to go bring it over to the uh, spindle sander and see if we can get this thing all ready. And we'll talk about how it all goes together. Now, you're going to insert all of these in. And all your goal is is to have them nice and flush so the next layer here goes in beautifully. Actually, those are some really nice joints. The one I'm not the biggest fan of is this one. I ended up sanding down the edges too much, got a little bit too carried away, and I ended up with a bigger gap than I wanted. Now, a lot of these gaps are gonna be hidden because we got a second piece of wood that trims over top. Now, get all these fit, uh, and when you cut the bottoms, make sure that you always cut them in the right direction because I, I kind of mixed. Don't know how that happened. <laughs> it's all covered, so I don't care anyways. Now. You want to make sure that these are all nice and flat. And you see, all of my handles have a bit of a different look to them. I consider it the old carved look. It looks nice. Now, when you've got these all in, flushed up, so it's nice and smooth, take a pencil and label them. Put an A here in the middle because, like I said, once again, it gets covered. So you put an A here and an A here, B, B. Just so when you take all these things out, because I'm going to go through and sand this down now, and I'm going to do a routed edge on the outside and potentially on the inside because I want to make it look really nice. So I have to take these out and I want to make sure that they go back in the same positions that I took them out in. So I'm going to do that now. Uh, next time you're going to see this, it's going to be all sanded, cleaned up and routed, and then I'm going to get these in. And uh, when you put these in, you when you're doing your final fit, feel free to wood glue them in. And heck, you can even put some brad nails at an angle through here because you won't see them. It'll cover it up and it'll make the whole thing nice and strong. Not like, you know, this thing isn't absolutely strong as is. I'll be back. Now, all the routing is done. No, I didn't show you me doing the routing, but I'm just going to give you a few little tips that I screwed up on so you don't have to make the same mistakes. Okay, when you go to do this, Start the router and just take these corners off. Same with the joints. That way, when you come through with the router, it's not going to knock those out by accident. You can see right there. The router went by and I hadn't pre-done that. And what happened is it grabbed it just right. Where if you come straight in, you take that material out and then it doesn't cause that to break up. It's character. You see that? That is character that I can't buy. Now, all through, when I also, on these outside radiuses, when you're going to go route, do a small pass first. Don't go full depth and then come back and then do the full depth after you've knocked out these two corners and you've taken a bit off because because this grain is literally all over the place. Like, what is this one? This is because it's all two by fours. They're all 45 degree angles. You're going to be hitting issues with catching grain and pine is not the most stable of wood when it comes to that. It likes to pop out. But in reality, you just need to learn to negotiate with the wood and figure out exactly and how it likes to behave and once you do that you get some amazing what you can actually build now i'm going to go i'm going to get all of the arms installed I'll be right back all right everything's installed i used just uh 
what are these inch and a quarter drywall screws after gluing them and countersinking them just to make sure I've got a really good grab on those that way you know it can take a bit of abuse if suddenly some young person comes and spins it at the absolute best of their ability but now you get to see a screw up that actually looks pretty cool now, on the back side I went through and I routed the whole distance and in reality I should have stopped there and I should have stopped there oops but it's not the end of the world because that actually has a really cool look and feel to it, it almost has uh, I, I don't know which side i like better at this point so you know sometimes interesting screw-ups are worth it well uh, i'm going to just pretend that that was completely deliberate but it wasn't so if you don't want these gaps here i just took a sander and sanded them down so they look better stop your route there and stop your route there just take a bit of measuring to make sure everything is right. That's just a total flub up on my behalf, but I really like how that looks actually. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to get the um, central hub made on this because, I don't know, I have to decide if I want the central hub a different color than the main. So as of right now, I think I'm going to go stain this in Puritan Pine because this is going to actually have like a two-step process. This gets stained one color and then the secondary rim which is right here, it's that one, gets stained a second color, which is going to be like a dark walnut to give it a really nice contrast to each other. Same with the central hub, I think I'm gonna go with a dark walnut on that. So I'm gonna go get this stained and we are going to head on into this part here and I'll explain why those holes are drilled. See you in a few. Now I promised we were going to talk about this here. This is the trim that goes around the outside of said wheel. And it's used to cover up the joints and make it all look good. Now, how complicated you go on this is 100% up to you. You have the option of just cutting out the pine, giving the edge a little bit of a chamfer, chamfer and gluing this down. Ignore my screw holes. That was something else. You also have the option of doing what I did here. Now, this is more complicated, and you might not want to do this. I routed the edges, and then using a 3 quarter inch uh, Forstner bit, I drilled the holes through with the marking with the pencil through the template. That's what those holes are for in the template. Now what this is going to be for is when I've got the screws in there, I'm going to be taking dowel, I'm going to be sticking that in, cutting it off, and then gluing the dowel in to cover up all the screw holes. It'll add some character to the overall piece and it'll look good. The other thing that I'm doing is this is going to be a dark walnut color. So you end up with a much nicer contrast. A much nicer contrast in terms of color when you have the secondary wood. And I had to stain this separately because I'm very thin in this thing when it's all together. So this has to dry and be done. It's a bit of a jump around to make this thing work. Pardon all the sawdust. This is what happens when I do so much uh, routering in a couple days. Anyways, I'm going to get this mounted and glued down. So when you put this on, just put a little bead of glue underneath. And if you did this, you can put the screws through the bottom. If you didn't do this, clamp it so it holds on. You also have the option of doing it on just one side or doing it on both. I haven't decided yet, but I think I might just do it on one. But you never know. It might change in five minutes. And yeah, anyways... We are moving on to doing the center hubs. Now, this is up to you on how you end up doing it. If you're doing this as say as like a wall decor, you'll be building these circles, putting them on, and you're done because you, you, you don't need to do it. And in reality, you can even skip the back one because then this will sit flat against a wall and it'll look really nice. But if you want to make this into the, the typical proper ships wheel that You'll be able to sit there and spin it like an idiot for her because it's just fun, <laughs> like me. Uh, <laughs> you'll want to follow ahead on this next part. So, what I'm doing here is not off-the-shelf uh, items because, man, I racked my brain on this one. I was tempted to run a dowel through and have it, you know, sit and be through a pipe as a kind of a quasi-bearing but all of them weren't exactly what I wanted. They didn't have that feel of a ship's wheel that was freewheeling. So I went over to my side yard and my old kid's bike trailer. These things are gr 
like not my old kids, but my my kids' old bike trailer. I have used it. I've finished it. These tires are almost right down to the rubber. So it gets to the point where the amount of fixing up that I need to do on that trailer wasn't worth it. But you'll notice something is missing out of the center. I went through and I pulled out the hub after I, you know, cut it, sanded it. And, you know, it looks pretty ghastly because that used to sit in the middle. Now, why is this so good? Because this shaft is a bearing shaft perfect for going hook into the middle and then this will go into the base of the wood you know this plastic i can sand it down i can drill the exact hole i need so this will sit into the base this will go into the wheel and it'll spin listen to that bearing you can hear just how much it's almost finished but it'll be perfect for this you know good retirement for you mr wheel after putting on like a thousand kilometers on that thing so i'm going to go through and i'm going to drill the hole on the back side of this it'll be on the back through to the middle because it needs to have lots of support now this here is a two inch circle initially i was going to do the pipe and this whole thing's built around that pipe in the center and doing what you want i built a two inch plug that i sanded down to the exact size and then this is going to go through the center and the one thing which i'm going to tell you right now is use this to do your circles this is a template that i'll link up here in terms of how i did it and what i did is i used this to draw the circles why because it gives me that center point right there and i'll know where to drill to make sure i'm in the center of this circle and it just makes things a lot easier same with down here it gives me the circle you can use a compass but i really dig this i've always used it and used it in many videos Anyways, I'm going to go get these cut down, and I'll be back. We are all assembled here. So you can see there's a little bit of green masking tape on that center shaft. It was a perfect fit, and it wanted to spin on the shaft. So I put just a little bit of tape around, and what does it locks that up while still making it removable? You know, it's always nice to be able to have that. Then all it is, I drilled a hole enough where this inch and a half drywall screw would get enough placement to go through and pick up the lower piece there. So, you know, I should have painted that before I finished up here. I said, be very careful when I go and actually, you know, paint it in walnut, which for some reason is taking forever to dry. Anyways, now that we've got that done, the back is, you can choose to route the back, which I'm going to go do right away, you know, and I should have also said that before I put it. Oh, this is what happens when I get carried away with myself. I'm like, I got an idea, I'm going to build it. No, look at that. At least it's in the back. Nobody will see it, except for you. Nobody's going to tell anybody that I... Yeah. God, that has to be the one with the big difference on it. Because, yeah, that, now that, that sucker is... <laughs> that sucker is stuck in there now. Anyways, there's the uh, part that's going to go into the final, you know, whatever basis I have later on. Because that'll give me enough bit out from the edge with this. I like enough offset anyways i'm gonna go get this cleaned up somehow it's gonna be an interesting fix and this comes out so we can get it all going i'm painting this walnut i'm gonna route this same with that that's gonna be walnut and we're getting close to wrapping this thing up all right this is all lovely finished up sanded done etc etc now first of all i went through and using a gel stain, which is really important, uh, this is texture and gel, that doesn't help too much. This is uh, provincial, and the gel stain works differently than your regular stain. It's very goopy, like, if, I'll see if I can get this lid open, because it doesn't want to close on a good day, so that's why it's got that lovely piece of plastic in there. So, you can see here that this gel stain is thick, and it's really good for stuff like this, because... You put it on, you let it set for a moment, then you wipe it off, and like a good aging, it sits into gaps and grooves and the such like that to give the whole appearance of a really nice, like, aged finish. Now, after that, after it's all dried, I used this uh, semi-gloss Varathane, and this has three coats on it, and the reason I want to do it is because I like the way it looks. It's got a bit of a shine to it. It'll be easy to dust, you know, if it sits up for a long time. And yeah, 
it's it's a you can do full gloss you can do satin it's up to you i like the semi gloss because i think it's just the right amount of look to make this thing work really well now at this point this wheel is done you can do whatever you want with it you can put it on your pirate ship you can hang it on your wall you can go plundering uh just need the ship to put it on it's like removable steering wheel on a car yeah i'm gonna go out plundering i just need me wheel but on my website down below i'm going to be having an additional 3d plan that you can add to this to pretty much round out the whole thing of course you're gonna need a 3d printer but what it is is i wanted to do the brass accents and the 3d printer is literally the easiest way to do it so you on the file you'll find these little doohickeys and that little doohickey and all you're going to do if you decide to go this route is you're going to put well we're going to put one it's very slippy right now so i'm actually going to use crazy glue to put these on because it's a polymer base on the actual wheel and these are plastic so it should stick without having too much to go so you just are going to put all these around the outside edge and you're along for the ride and i'm actually not showing you what i'm doing and it just adds that extra little bit of saw when you missed one Ta -da! um adds an extra little bit of flare to it at least eight pieces of flare or no is it nine pieces of flare regardless that is the wheel and it's all done now over there you can see the base for the vertical and that is the not the hinge but the um the bearing from the, the trailer that sits in that board allowing this to freewheel when it's all assembled i'll be getting to that soon ish now this is all done i hope you enjoyed this very interesting and very realistic wood wheel this is about as authentic as you can get, you know, except for the center hub. They did a brass center hub that had a key day way in it. I learned a lot about uh, these types of wheels when I built this. Regardless, if you build this, please send me a copy of it. I'd love to see it. This is more of a woodworking project, but at the same time, this is one of those props that will get interacted with. And you can use this exact process that I did here and build it out of styrofoam. It'll just be brittle, and you'll have a risk that if somebody plays with it, they'll break it. It's 100% on you, but all of the techniques here, 100% can be transposed to styrofoam and be done in about a quarter of the time. Now, uh, regardless, I'm going to get all this glued down. You'll see the final wheel as a nice little montage at the end, as always. But thank you for hanging out. Thank you. A big thank you to my patrons who send me a little bit each month to help me out with this. My... Uh, subscribers and my viewers you guys are all fantastic and we are rapidly approaching halloween and i am running out of time regardless thank you for hanging out and uh yeah oh and remember to check out my website down below i have a whole bunch of 3d printed plans and all of the template files you find on my videos are there have a good one all mm -hmm.